take a moment to acknowledge the land that we're on that was historically a part of the Wintu Nation. Um, here in Calusa, we have the Kutchaldehi Band of Wintu Indians, as well as the Kletzaldehi Band of Wintu Indians, which were both Patwin, um, the River Patwin and the Squirrel Patwin. Yeah. California Creative Corps Upstate Region, Calusa County. Experiences related to health are often determined by factors beyond the individual, such as environment, policy, or court culture. The arts have a critical and accessible role to play in tackling community conditions. What do you think? So what do you think? Does, is that like obvious? Do you agree with that? I think it's not obvious, but yes, I agree with it. So in other words, you agree with it, but you're not quite sure why. No, I know why I agree with it. I would think that most people wouldn't see the connection I see between you... art and happiness yeah. and contentedness. So literally you've just put your finger on why this project matters, because we are going to create public awareness campaigns that place artists at the forefront of issues that are critical to society. So what is the California Creative Corps? It's an economic and workforce recovery pilot program intended to fuel positivity, regain public trust, and inspire health and safety across California's diverse populations. So what we want to do is place artists in service to society. Um, we want um, them to grow capacity through partnering with organizations that are doing vital work, such as yours in this room. The California Arts Council has given us four key areas of work. And it's saying just stick to these areas if you can, but then challenge us if you feel that within your communities there's something that's missing here, but which is critical to society. So the four areas are public awareness related to water and energy conservation, climate mitigation and emergency preparedness and relief, and disaster response. Civic engagement, um, social justice and community engagement, and of course public health awareness. I work for California Tribal TANF Partnership, and we're a social services agency um, that provides temporary assistance for needy families of Native American descent. And we have, uh, this is really interesting to me because we have 17 different sites um, located all across Northern California and into the upper part of Central California as well. This is, this is fantastic. So it's a regional, a regional mm -hmm. support system. Mm -hmm. And, we're, and we'll, we'll be saying this to you time and time again. You might have projects, um, whether you're an artist, an arts organization, or a, a social service organization, or a unit of government. You might have projects that are specific, winning projects that are specific to Calusa, um, to a city, for example, or to a township, or an underrepresented area, or peoples here. But you might also have a regional idea, um, which would be very exciting. Well, and this is a, a picture that's of no surprise up in Shasta Reservoir. Oof. I tend not to call it a lake only because it is, it was originally a river, but that's my own little thing. But it has deeply, deeply impacted Calusa, of course, and all the Central Valley counties with the change in how much flow you're seeing. So this is really for you to share more of those details with us and then really thinking about Okay, given this changing resource um, availability, you know, again, what can artists do to look at where we're going in 50 years and what are, you know, how we can minimize the impacts to Calusa County? The program elements that California Arts Council is encouraging artists to get behind is climate mitigation. You know, how do some of these things that your, you know, water scarcity, for example, how will it affect? the Pacific Flyway and the Calusa National Wildlife Refuge. So be thinking about all these things. Within the Healthy Places Index, in every area of every part of Calusa, you'll be able to find um, the racial and ethnic makeup of that particular area. The overall picture for Calusa County shows that you're way over half your population is um, Hispanic or Latino. Surely that means that there's some fabulous program that can be developed um, in relation to and um, about and in service to um, working with the Latino population. This is a map that's being adopted by um, grantors, sources of funding and um, analysts in 
you know, local government across the United States now. Um, it's really taken off, but it, it comes from California. And you see where that little, those little black lines tell you where in the Healthy Places Index you are in Calusa. So we can see there's something going on with education, isn't there? That means you probably have a strong case for support to create a project around education. Same with transportation, same with neighborhood, same with healthcare access. The thing that stands out, unlike any other of the 19 counties in the upstate region, the Latino being 59.4% as an average uh, percentage, Latino Hispanic for yeah. um, Calusa, with a maximum of 74.5% in track three. So that was um, quite, quite stood out. Education scores were the ones that are lowest for the county. So we looked at those and healthcare access. So we wanna understand more of those, but I will say housing was incredible scores and same with economic, much higher than we've seen in other areas of that state region. What you want to do is burrow down within the light blue and find out where it's being dragged down and see if there any are real issues. What, what kind of markers are there for education? My big flag I put was it had a really high score for education, 50.4, while the county score was only 8.9. Right. And, and this is the same one that's the Hispanic Latino population of 74.5%. Yeah. Preschool enrollment is 14.7? So in other words, if you, wow. if you want, if you're thinking education is what we want to focus on for Calusa, find the track that has the lowest overall health scoring. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it will strengthen your case. For track numbers. one, two, and three all have over 5,000 people of population. Okay. And both tract four and five are in the 2200 to 2500. So they are smaller, quite a bit smaller than the other tracks. Please. When you talk about education, right? you're talking about stuff, grammar school education or overall education? Yeah, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you mentioned education in general. So California Arts Council already have a slew of education programs. So what, what we don't want to do with this is to just create a project that one of those other programs can fund, right? Because why wouldn't you just apply directly for an education? Plus, don't forget, Prop 28 has just been passed. So when we think about education, maybe another way, a different way of thinking about education and the, the needs of our kids is to think of intergenerational learning. What could a project that isn't necessarily curriculum bound or in the classroom or aligned to academic standards how what that what might that look like in Calusa you know what valuable wisdom could be shared between communities with our young think of it in a different way perhaps mm -hmm. but have so you created any partnerships with the for art foundation there are so I'm so glad you mentioned this one of the one of the ways, one of the reasons that we ask you to tell us what your community resource group says, that we turn that question back to you. Do you have a community foundation that could also support projects that could really, so say you were to gain 20,000 or 100,000 for a much needed project, uh, you know, in Calusa or regionally, um, would your community foundation perhaps support it? Would um, your office of education support or your school district supports intergenerational learning and um, could you leverage your amazing projects uh, for, to gain extra funding? It's uh, River Partners. Great. And I just, um, they're in town so they create wildlife habitat for the benefit yeah. of people and the environment. Um, together with our partners they restore rivers to rebuild critical habitat. Yeah. So as you're talking about local communities and the precious water, um, we do have river partners in town. One of the things that we'll be suggesting to, to Joelle and to Sharon and, and, and the board is perhaps to have, once we've had this conversation with you, go out and have more special interest conversations, you know what I mean? Like, have a conversation about water and get all the important stakeholders into the room with artists. Don't forget the artists, because they're the ones that are going to dream up this vision to share the story that you have. What we will be looking for is for projects that feel like they have a degree of confidence in so far that they might become case studies, they might become gold standard projects that could be taken to other communities, that 
if a community in North Carolina were looking at Calusa, they could pick a project around which we'd created a case study and say, we could adapt that for our community. You know what I mean? We want this project to be generous. It's a pilot. We want the state to continue funding it. Let's create great case studies. So when you're thinking about projects, think, think you know, two years from now, will this project be an incredible case study? How do we make it into an amazing case study we're so proud of? November is Native American Heritage Month. Right. And that's yeah. not something the school acknowledges. Mm -hmm. I know right. because all three of my children. So maybe, I mean, there are a couple of projects that are out there. There's the, the, the project with, this, with the kids in the school, but then there's also perhaps something that is very specific to creating awareness for our indigenous peoples. Classically in the listening session, where we challenge you to, to, to think up projects, is there a way that a collection of community, social service type organizations, educators, and artists, remember we want to pay artists, can come together and brainstorm what, what kind of harmonizing public awareness educating program could look like, led by artists. Yeah. that the tribe would trust. It has what's called a big time where they have a cultural ceremony where they do their own. They invite tribes from around and they do specific dances. It's not, they don't do fancy dance or jingle dance. It's right. not open to the public where there's vendors. It's a, it's a spiritual ceremony. Yeah. So we don't do powwows here. So it's not like a public facing thing. No. I wonder if it would need to be. Maybe a follow up conversation would be with the Arts Council and then with you. And, and then we, again, we bring in some artists and then maybe also have a conversation with your Latino population in the same way and, and the Chinese population as well, or Asian American. From what I'm hearing from you, it's like, you want things to be more visible about the cultures that are here or that have been impacted by here mm -hmm. or that have made a difference here or that are not seen enough. So maybe be thinking along those lines, like, um, and how could you engage film making with that? You know, maybe you work with some filmmakers and maybe you need a writer as well to write a script for that. I'd like to encourage you to do is to, <laughs> is to tell us how much it costs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, don't, don't think scarcity mode. Now is a moment to mobilize ideas. Keep thinking, you know, water, energy, climate mitigation, emergency preparedness, civic engagement, uh, social justice, community engagement, public health awareness. Keep thinking those things, apply it to everything you can. And then if there's an another issue that you feel is absolutely critical, that doesn't look exactly like that or fit exactly in that box, let us know and we'll just keep having the conversation. Mm -hmm.